So I, I started the show saying, when you're a number one pick and you go to Duke and you have national commercials, the branding is you're a star. But if you go to the University of Washington and you're the last guy in the pick and you have no commercials, you're a guy. But when I look at Kyrie Irving's stats and Isaiah Thomas, I see a guy that's pretty much the same guy. Am I wrong on this? That basically Cleveland got 90% of Kyrie and the only guy that could guard LeBron, Jay Crowder. It looks like they won the trade. Well, so I thought in, in real time, in, in the moment it happened, that if Isaiah ended up being healthy, Cleveland got the better end of this. Now, let me be fair. I, Kyrie's better than Isaiah. Yes. But it's close. Kyrie is somewhere, at best, the ninth best player in the world, at worst, the 13th best player in the world. Isaiah is somewhere, at best, the 14th best and at worst, the 18th best. So they're just one tier apart. It's also worth mentioning this. Last year, Isaiah Thomas was the better player. Last year, Isaiah Thomas was fifth in MVP voting. Kyrie didn't get a single vote. Last year, Isaiah Thomas was second team All-NBA. Kyrie was not first, second, or third team All-NBA. I do think Kyrie's slightly better, but it is not some gigantic cliff between them. And they... Both of their skill sets are exactly what you need with LeBron. You need a guy that can hit shots, and you need a guy that when LeBron goes to the bench can create his own offense. We saw that Isaiah already, first game back from his hip injury, can do that. You know, I was saying when David Letterman was at NBC, um, and he was, you know, he was the talk of the world, that David Letterman didn't have to seek other employers. CBS came to him, and ABC came to him. And NBC offered something else. And Fox may have come to him. Is that when you're great, and there's very few of these people, you don't have to worry about down the road. Down the road comes to you. Um, and I'm looking at LeBron, and there's a story Dan Gilbert's like, we wanted him to commit. This is a story that came out yesterday. We wanted him to commit. He wouldn't commit. We, you know. And my takeaway is, He's not committing because LeBron doesn't know what he's going to do. And I do think there's a lot of fans that think, oh, he's got this sinister plan. But Stephen A. Smith told me when he broke the Miami Heat story with LeBron, he said he didn't know 24 hours before. If he did, I would have known because I had LeBron as a source. So when you look at LeBron and there's all this Laker talk, and now, I mean, where do you make of it? Do you think he has an idea what he's going to do? I, I think, I'm sure he has a gut feeling, but I, I, I can confidently say, Anyone that is claiming to know where LeBron will play next year is lying because I do not think LeBron knows where he's going to play next year. Don't you think LeBron believes they can win the title? If they win the title, you think he's leaving? You think he's certain he wants to go play with the Lakers? You don't think it's going to matter how Lonzo looks, how Brandon Ingram looks, how Paul George looks, what they end up doing? Maybe Philadelphia is intriguing to him. Maybe. He wants to decide, you know what? Everyone has decided that it's okay. It's all about, as Colin Coward would tell you, quality of life. And so I'll go sign with the Warriors for the minimum. No one can criticize me then. I'll win 11 rings. So I don't think LeBron knows what he's going to do. Why would he know what he's going to do? He doesn't know how this team's going to mesh. He doesn't know how Isaiah Thomas' health is going to be. He doesn't know if Kevin Love's going to keep this up. So no, I, I have never believed that it's a foregone conclusion. LeBron is leaving Cleveland. And I don't think anyone knows where LeBron's going because he doesn't know where he's going. If the Sixers are the process, the Lakers are the mess. Uh, we, we In the last five years, the Sixers have won 25% of their games. We laugh at them. The Lakers have won 28%. We still think of them as a quality rebuilding process. Does Paul George, ninth year in the league, want to join the Lakers? Well, uh, and by the way, the Lakers don't have their pick next year, and it's looking like it's going to be a good pick. I, Paul George might want to join the Lakers if someone else is going with him, but there's been here is something that's been true every day Paul George has been in the NBA, and it is true today, and it will be true next year. If Paul George is your best player, your team is mediocre or slightly better than that, period, point blank. Paul George cannot be the best player on a championship team. The problem with the Thunder early in the year, they were acting like, oh, we have one A and one B, Russell and Paul George. No, you don't. Paul George has to be a second best player if you're going to compete for a championship. Right now, he has an alpha with him in Russell. I would only leave that situation 
if I'm going somewhere else, there is already an alpha in place. Now, maybe the Lakers can, can woo LeBron over, and then it's LeBron and Paul George, and I guess that one makes sense. But I guess the only reason you would do it is because L.A. is an awesome place to live, and it's where he's from. And, like, I understand that, but from a basketball perspective, he's in a much better situation right now than the one the Lakers would be in, unless, of course, LeBron goes with him. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.